thought I'd give you another quick update here. Uh, it's Saturday the 30th. So where I left off was I was trying to get the connection solid for the heat exchanger. And uh, I believe I've done that. I believe we are good there. So like I explained last time, um, I did fill here uh, with this off. I did crack it to vent some air all the way through, comes around, comes over. I had a vent here. Um, right now I've got pressure on it. As you can see, it's had 20, uh, I think that's, well, it's, it's just about 30. It's just under 30 pounds of pressure on it now for the past week. It hasn't moved. Pressure relief valve is dripping a little bit, but that's probably because I'm so close to 30 pounds, which is only a 30 pound pressure relief valve. So that side's only gonna have 15 in it anyway. But um, anyway, what then what I did was I decided to open this valve up. Um, I got the tank on and pressurize everything all the way up to here, uh, to these valves. So I did that and I immediately had a leak here around this uh, thread. It was a slight, it was, it was bubbling up out of here. So then I thought, you know, why don't I just shut off the, um, the hot out and test everything through both of the heaters. So I did that. All of these unions leaked. Um, so then I thought, okay, well, I'll give them the same treatment as I did down here. I'll give them Teflon tape, pipe dope, went back, did all of that to them, tried it again. And I had a small leak right here coming out of this one. And luckily on the same exact joint, I had a small leak coming out of the union. So, okay, shut it off, drained everything. Um, I, I t tried tightening this flange another turn, put it back, pressure on it, still leak like a sieve, okay. Took the pump completely out, undid this union, cleaned up all my tape and dope, re-tightened this down another one turn, I wanna say, re-taped re it, re-pipe doped it, took this flange completely off, taped it, doped it, put it all back, everything is tight now, no leaks. Um, as you can see right now, this is on. I'm bringing my water in here. This is on. Um, so this is full all the way down, up, and then here is where I was when I cracked this. If I put this on full. So it's filling the heat exchanger and coming out here. This is off. So with that off, I'm at 50 PSI on the domestic side of things. So, and I'm happy with that. That's my street pressure is 50. I'm holding just under 30 on the uh, heating side of things and no leaks. Um, so actually, what is that? Uh, it's coming from there, which is coming from there. Oh, it's coming out of here. Okay. Well, that's an easy one, right? <laughs> so I'll get another turn on that sucker and uh, yeah. Phew. Okay. At least it's not a solder joint, man, right? Make my day here. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. So now all I need to do is uh, get this pump roughly where I want it and solder this joint in here, which is this, up to another shutoff. Once I get it in the exact spot, then I can put the cap on this, open this up, and I can test all of these joints. So then basically the whole system here is good i know i won't have any leaks any of my solder joints and then all i've got to worry about is from that shut off over and into the tank and then all of my domestic stuff down here and then uh, i just have to i just have to go ahead and put this this pipe back which runs underneath here and goes up for the supply um but 
not super worried about that because that stuff is, in my opinion, is, is easy. Um, I can get to it. I can solder it fairly easily. I'll probably build this whole thing um, at, on the bench and maybe make a solder joint somewhere here to attach it. Um, and then all of this domestic stuff, it all can be isolated. I can take it all apart here, here, here. So, you know, if, if there is a leak, I'm not, I'm not completely taken apart big unions and places where I can't get wrenches and all that stuff. I'm, I'm golden. So, um, coincidentally this past week, and I don't know if it has anything to do with me tapping off of this. I don't think so. Our Bosch has been starting to act up. It's been throwing an error code once a day. We've got to come down here and reset it. So I told my wife now at least at a minimum, I can just run a hose over to the inlet of this and come back out the hot and come back in over here and uh, just shut this thing off, you know, and, um, you know, find a way to isolate, just take this right out of the system if I, if I really wanted to. And uh, I could use one of these heaters or two of these heaters for our hot water. So if this thing does die before I've got this done, at least now I know I'm good through both heaters. I can fire one of them up. Um, they are full right now. I did take this black hose here and uh, I threaded it onto each one of them just to make sure there were no like internal leaks in the heaters or anything. And I turned this on. we're good I did that to both of them so yeah I'm happy I'm real happy we're making some progress here um, this tank I was a little worried about this tank uh, this was my existing it's this thing's probably nine years old and uh, when I took it down it used to be mounted over there where my, where my water meter comes in and it was up there on the ceiling I tested the pressure on it it had like five pounds on it and I'm like, oh man, the diaphragm must be blown or something. So they, following the directions, they say to blow it up to your city water pressure before you connect it. So I blew it up to 50 pounds and it seemed to be holding, um, but it definitely, it's not full. It has that tinny, like it's empty with air sound. So this is still good, I think. Save me 80 bucks there. Um, it's easy to replace if I need to. I just drain, you know, I'll, drain the the water side and uh just replace it so but yeah can't complain about that man 50 psi uh with the pump and everything and uh no leaks well got one leak here but we'll, we'll take care of that so okay anyway uh we'll talk to you soon